Hello everybody, Jeff Blankman with you here today and we're going to be talking here in a moment with South Central Calhoun head girls basketball coach Dave Burks about an outstanding career. He picked up career victory number 500 earlier this season and tonight's episode again brought to you by uh, Western Iowa Networks along with Carol Broadcasting and Dave I want to thank you very much for joining us here today. It's a pleasure having you here and uh... Uh, welcome to our home, and uh, we're going to make this work tonight. Absolutely, Dave. Uh, as I said, 32 years as a head basketball coach. Uh, we'll talk about that 500 career victory here a little bit later, but let's kind of start for you where maybe all of this began, probably back in your playing days. I imagine uh, going to school at Manila, uh, you played for a great coach in Bill Miller. Um, what, when did you start thinking about coaching? Was it back in high school or junior high, or was it later on in life? No, I always always had a kind of a pass for that. Uh, you know, we had the old K-12 building, and uh, Bill Miller, who was my high school coach, was also the uh, physical education instructor. And, you know, if we had study halls or, or uh, you know, didn't have a class, uh, he'd give us a pass, and we'd go down. And, you know, I helped him with some elementary classes, and, it's, you know, I've always enjoyed athletics. I've always been, you know, involved in sports. And it was just it was just kind of a natural of something I, I wanted to do. Was it always going to be basketball, or was there a different sport that, that maybe intrigued you the most when you were younger? Um, you know, I, I was open to everything. Um, you know, it, it's really kind of a, an interesting story. Um, you know, I played uh, four years of college football and two years of college basketball. Uh, and in my first job, uh, the coaching was I was head football, which I just loved. Uh, I was the head boys track coach, but I had to take the girls basketball. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 30, 32 years later, I'm, I'm still with those girls. So, um, you know, whether you call it fate or whatever, it, it's worked out well. What made you stay with girls once you got started? Well, you know, it, it, it's just girls, you know, some people say girls are hard to coach. You know, you just learn to, to how to work with them. Um, you know, sometimes they'll they'll give you their heart and soul before you know boys do. So it, it's been a it's you know it's been a great ride, and uh, you know I've I've enjoyed just about every minute of it. Let's kind of jump back a little bit to your high school days. You mentioned you played for the legendary coach Bill Miller. Um, what did you take from him that you use today, or didn't you, or or how did he help maybe develop you as a coach? Oh, there's just little things we do that. Uh, um, you know, I got from him. Uh, anybody that's watched it warm up, uh, the last thing we do is is just a three minute scrimmage, and that's something I did as a player with Bill. And you know, always felt like that kind of got you ready to play, as opposed to just shooting layups or standing around shooting free throws. Um, you know, you get into more of a game situation. So you know, things like that. Uh, you know, his demeanor. Anybody that saw Bill coach never never really saw him get too excited and. Um, you know, you go with your personality. You know, I was going to coach just like Bill did, and, and that lasted about a quarter. And, uh, you know, that wasn't me. I was, I was a little more emotional or a lot more emotional. And so I just, uh, you know, I, I did my own thing. But, uh, you know, there's always little things that we do that kind of came from him. The Manila tree, though, seems to be pretty long. Uh, you, uh, Gene Rasmussen down at IK Manning's had tremendous success. Uh, Gail Hardigan down at Trainer, uh, just to name three. I, I know there's more scattered throughout the state. Tom McDonald, who coached where I Absolutely. played in, in high Absolutely. school, was, was a tremendous coach. Took, I think, Palmer Palmer yep. to the state yep. tournament in girls as well. So what is it about that area, that community, that has maybe developed so many great coaches? I, I think it's just a, a group of people that... Uh, you know, enjoyed winning, and, and Manila, IKM, now IKM Manning. Um, you know, we grew up with being committed to sports, uh, enjoying sports. Uh, we were blessed with good coaches. Uh, Gail Hardigan, you mentioned, had uh, uh, the legendary Larry Bullock, uh, you know, won a state title in 74. Uh, Tom McDowell and myself both had Bill Miller. Uh, so, you know, people that we respected, people that were successful, and, and you kind of want to follow in those shoes. Now, you mentioned that it lasted about a quarter, and then you follow in Bill's way changes. How have you changed as a coach over the years? Uh, you know, you, you, you learn what to do, what not to do, um, you know, how to control your emotions. You know, I, I've told girls many times I, I've never apologized for my passion, my emotions. Um, you know, generally they're good. You know, do I get excited? Do I get riled up? Absolutely. But, uh, um, you know, um, 
officials. You know, I think that's one thing. Um, you know, I was I was pretty rowdy as a as a young coach, and you figure out it's not like it is on TV where you know you work that official like they talk about on TV. You know, you high school officials, you know, you're not going to work them for a call. Uh, they're doing the best they can, and you know, I've gone probably 20 years without a technical, and and I'm proud of that. You know, I I think you know. I do things right. I think I'm respected by a lot of officials for that. Jeff Lyon been joined right now by Dave Burks, of course, the head girls basketball coach uh, at uh, South Central Calhoun. And Dave, everything started for you in NESCO uh, back in 1984-85. That was still six-on-six six basketball. What was that like coaching six-on-six? Six? Oh, it, I loved it. Uh, in fact, we had, uh, when I came to Lytton, uh, first year of Lytton was a six-on-six. Six. Uh, we didn't make the transition uh, to uh, five on five till the 93-94 season, which ironically we went to state that year. But uh, uh, what kind of changed my mind, um, in 92-93 in we had a phenomenal team. We averaged close to 90 a game. And uh, a legendary coach by the name of Gerald Thomas that, that was at Lakeview uh, stalled to beat us. And, you know, I was sitting there during the game watching three outstanding athletes just stand on one end of the court and not be a factor. And, you know, that's not athletics. You know, to me, athletics is you take your best and you put them against my best and, and the best come out. And uh, so I, I really enjoyed the transition to five on five. Uh, although six on six was a great game, uh, there was a lot of benefits to it. Would I go back? No. I was going to say, that was a question I was going to ask you. You hear a lot of people saying that girls basketball was more popular back when it was six on six, and maybe they need to look to go back to that to kind of bring the sport back a little bit as it's struggling with numbers right now. You don't think that's the direction they need to go? No, I, I think with the opportunities that girls have collegiately, uh, not that they didn't back then, but, but more so now. Um, you know, I, I just, I mean, there are good things with six on six, but, you know, there's still some things. You know, the ability, the inability to tie up the ball. Um, two dribbles, you know, did you really hinder kids? You know, I don't know. But uh, uh, I, I still think deep down, uh, five on five is the way to go. What were the early days like um, at NASCO, Cola NASCO now? Well, I took over a down program. Uh, they hadn't had a winning season in quite a few years. Uh, the first year I was there, we went 9 and 10, which was you know, a, really a pretty successful season. Uh, the next year, I think we went, uh, you know, maybe 14 and six. So we made a quick transition there. Um, I had a, when, when my final year there, which was Cole and Esco, um, we had an outstanding group of eighth graders that were coming in. So I was pretty excited, but uh, unfortunately I was a, a victim of a master contract. And so uh, I was, uh, my position was terminated. And so I, I left these kids for another coach and uh, came up to Lytton. And, you know, how, how God works, you know, that's where I met my wife. I, I have a great family. And, and at Rockwell City Lytton, we were fortunate enough to win a state title. So, you know, obviously it's been a great move. Was Lytton the only place you looked, or where did you all look? And what was that, that made you, did Lytton kind of the deciding factor to come here those years ago? Well, it, it uh, uh, you know, obviously teaching position was huge. Um, I interviewed for some head football positions because I had, I had been the head football at, at NESCO. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a little closer to home. Uh, and, you know, my family still lives in Manila. My mother still lives there. Um, you know, as I kind of want to be a little closer to this direction, uh, I wanted to stay small. Um, I didn't want a 4A, 5A type school. So uh, it just, you know, it just kind of worked out. I, I had the right connections to get the job, and, and so I took it, and, and now I've been here a long time. <laughs> Dave, you mentioned coaching football. You also said you played football for four years down at Central. How much did football kind of develop the type of coach you are? Well, you know, I mean, the, the discipline, uh, the toughness. Uh, you know, I know Bill Miller was one, and, and you hear so much about it now, but uh, Bill Miller encouraged kids to get out to football because he just felt like, you know, it made them stronger, it made them tougher, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of boys shy away from it, you know, might get hurt or, or whatever, but, uh, you know, Bill encouraged us to play football, and, uh, 
you know, I, I played for a legendary uh, coach down at Central, uh, Ron Skipper, you know, Hall of Famer, and, you know, taught us so much about not just the game, but life in general. And, you know, there again, you know, as you, as you go through your coaching career, you, uh, you know, there are various, there's lots of people that affect how you act. And, you know, Ron Skipper was one that uh, definitely has been an influential person in my coaching career. And Dave, I know you and I were up uh, watching one of your former players uh, play in college tonight. And we were driving back, you talked about how as a coach, kind of being that role model, that leadership, and, and it's about more than just a game, and I think that's something that makes you the coach you are today. Well, and I think that's something, you know, you, you previously asked about, you know, how have you changed, whatever, I, I think you you recognize that better, that, uh, you know, yeah, you want to win, and you want these kids to play good basketball, but, um, you, you know, you want them to be good people. You you know, I've mentioned respect, you know, I, I want our kids, when they walk off the floor, you know, not just our crowd, but the other crowd. I want the officials to say, you know, that 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 was a good team and, and a, a well-respected, well-behaved uh, team. So, um, you know, y you want them to be successful basketball players, but, you know, as I mentioned, you want them to be successful mothers. You want them to be successful um, housewives, uh, you know, successful in their job. Uh, you know, just everything they do, you want them to do well. Your first year here was Lytton. Second year it was Rockwell City Lytton. You kind of went through that with Nesco, Nicola Nesco. Did that help in the transition, or is each transition a little different? Well, it, it helped, but I tell you, it was scary. You know that uh, um, you know I I lost my job, ended up at Lytton, and then within one year, you know I'm thinking, is this going to happen again? But uh, you know I, I was used to it. Uh, you know, probably in putting two teams together, uh, the experience was good that I went through at Colonesco. Um, you know, the first year, in fact, we actually had co-coaches, and then uh, uh, he bowed out, and then I took over in full, uh, full form. And uh, you know, it, it, we had a lot of success at Rockwell City Lytton. Talk about that early success with Rockwell City Lytton. Well, it was, you know, Lytton, um, Lytton was fairly successful. Rockwell City had been kind of a down program. And, you know, just implementing a work ethic, uh, an off-season program, um, you know, we had some great athletes and uh, just utilizing their abilities and getting not just the, the kids but the, the community to buy into here's what we need to do to be successful. And, uh yeah, you know, both Lit Litton was always supportive, Rockwell City with a new coach. Um, you know, they kind of had to learn to, uh, there was a little more time commitment than maybe previously, but, uh, um, you know, everybody bought into it, and, and again, we, we had a lot of success. Jeff Blankman joined again tonight by Dave Burks, the head coach for now the South Central Calhoun Titan Girls Basketball Program. And again, our program tonight is sponsored by Western Iowa Network, so we certainly want to thank them. Uh, Dave, 93-94, uh, you've been Rockwell City Lytton since 89-90. All of a sudden, uh, you're in the state semis. Uh, the program had to be feeling pretty good right then. Oh, it was. Uh, you know, that was a phenomenal team I had that year. And, and, you know, I, I told a lot of people, if, if I really felt like if I had better state tournament experience, because that was my first year mm -hmm. as a coach, um, I think that group was talented enough. We could have we maybe won the title. Um, you know, we played a, a second-rated Montezuma team the, the first game of the tournament. Uh, they had a Division One girl end up playing at Iowa State. And... Uh, we, you know, strategy, we, we did, I didn't think we could stop her. And so we didn't even try. Uh, we just tried to stop everybody else. Uh, for many years, she had the tournament scoring record of 44, and, uh, but lost. And so it was a great upset win, first win in the state tournament. And, uh, and then got beat by the Vichel runner-up. But uh, I think if I had prepared better and, and knew more about what needed to happen, uh, we'd have made an awfully good run there. Do you think that year in helped you grow as a coach, having to kind of learn to coach at the state level? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, when we went again then in 03, there was a lot of things we did different. You know, from staying at home, um, traveling, practicing at home, trying to keep a routine. You know, kids went to, went to class, um, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that that was, that was huge. I know in 2004, our first game was a 10 a.m. game, 
And the girl says, nope, we're staying at home. And we left about 6, 6.30 and had breakfast on the way and played a great game. So it, it was keeping them at their comfort level, um, just strategy, how to, you know, how to prepare. And, and you know, um, one of the things I guess I'm most proud of, you know, I, in, in state tournament games, uh, you know, I've been 7-4, and four, you know. So uh, playing against the best in the state, uh, I feel like our preparation's been good. We've had some great upset wins, um, you know, obviously a title runner-up. Uh, so I, I feel like we've really competed at the highest level. Do you think the game has changed over the years, and, and in what ways has it changed? You know, not really. Um, you know, college obviously highly influences the high school. You know, you see a lot more, everybody's trying to run, you know, the three-pointer. And, and I, I, you know, the three-pointer has been huge uh, in how that affects the game. Um, you know, as we were watching a college game tonight, you know, just about everybody runs the four out and one one big big girl or one big guy in the middle, but it, it's up tempo. Everybody tries to press. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's uh, um, it's been a factor. Um, I guess I you know I kind of feel like one of the things I've done well is is we've pressed for 32 minutes. We've not pressed. Uh, we've played zone. We've played man. You know, I guess like I, I feel like we, we've really utilized the talent that we had and, and, and came out with the best outcome. I was just going to ask, are, 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 some coaches have a system and a style and they just stay with that and they, the kids kind of have to adapt. Are you one of those that kind of adapts the style every year to the talent you have? Oh, I, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, offensively, defensively. Um, you know, for example, this year we, we ran a 1-2-2 and I've never been a 1-2-2 fan, but I thought it fit. The, the personnel we had. Uh, you know, like I said, I had a team that uh, uh, we had 10 girls that were all just pretty decent, none great. But we just ran them in and ran them in. And, and you know, it seemed like every, at the beginning, every fourth quarter, it was either tight or we were a little behind. And yet that year we played in the regional final, a uh, chance to go to state because we just wore people down with that style. And so, um, no, I, I've adapted many, many times to fit kids. And, uh, you know, our, our uh, uh, 2004 championship team, we hardly ever pressed. But, boy, we played, we played good, solid half court. So, um, you know, that's kind of what you have to do, I think. With the years you've had here, has there ever been the thought of going somewhere else? Have you looked? Oh, I, I've had offers, you know. Um, you know, you, you, you get to know a lot of people through, through coaching and athletics. And, um, you know, I, I'm honored and, and humbled by, you know, some of the contacts I've had. Um, you know, family is important. Um, you know, what I've established here is important. You want to keep that going. Um, you know, about 10 years ago, we built a new home, which kind of, Kind of commit you to this area, um, you know, family. You know, I had little kids, uh, and and I just didn't feel I could pull them up. So I, I declined, and you know, there again, it, it's I, I couldn't couldn't ask for any better situation than here. Coach, through all the years here at Rockwell City, uh, Litton, um, what years you've talked about some state semis, some state championships, the the regional finals, some great teams you've had. What are some of the teams that were that were the most fun to just be around? Well, you know, our, our 04 team is as good of, of athletes as they were, and, and obviously state champions. You know, it's probably one of the most fun group of kids I've ever had. Some of the things that um, that happen, and, and you know, you could just story upon story of things that happen. And, and you know, they were, you know, I've had so many, so many great kids, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's all about fun. Um, we always try and have an annual uh, Christmas party, and you know we, you know how you adapt. We've had gay gifts, we've had serious gifts, and you know some of the stories. I, I, I about you know I about lose it right now thinking of of some of the gay gifts and the girls that got them, and oh it, it, it that's what makes it special. You know the the winning, yeah, but you know the relationships and and all the fun things that happen with with coaching. It is it, special. Are you able to keep in touch with a, you know a number of the players that have played for you over the years? Yeah, I have. You know, and, and there's some that uh, you know it's been a long time and, and still keep in contact. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it, it, it's special. And, and, you know, I've always told kids, you know, the door is always open. Uh, the phone is always there. Feel free to stop in. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of them that are very good at that. And, and now I, you, you learn that I've been there a long time because a lot of my coworkers, or, you know, I've probably got three or four coworkers <laughs> that are former players. So, um, you know, that's also maybe a time when you start thinking about, gee, maybe I ought to step down. Have you started coaching kids yet of the kids that you I, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid <laughs> so. Um, you know, this year would be an example. Uh, Maddie Jones, I coached her father in, in baseball. Uh, Heidi Hammond, I had her mother. Um, uh, one of our math teachers I had as a, as a player. So it, it's... Uh, um, we had a seventh grader that I coached her mother, you know, so yeah, there's, there's a lot around. What have you all coached over the years and what are you currently coaching along with girls basketball right now? Has no. it been just about everything? Oh, just about everything. Um, I've coached football, I've coached volleyball, I've coached baseball, I've coached softball. Uh, I mentioned high school boys track, I've had high school girls track. I currently coach junior high girls track. Um, probably the only thing I really haven't coached is, is wrestling, and I just have absolutely no experience with that. So, and, and I've always been busy in the winter, so you know I've never really had to worry about that. So okay. I've, I've been, been pretty active with that. And I know I've, I asked you kind of this question earlier, but with all of that experience, girls basketball was the one that you've stayed with all this time. It, it, it has. Uh, you know, and some of it's investment of time, you know. When I started coaching, and that's the way I was as an athlete, you know, I was going to do whatever it took. I was going to prepare. I was going to work hard. And, you know, I started that in basketball. Uh, you know, went to coaches' clinics, met some great coaches that, that really helped me. Um, and, and so once you start investing that time, we started having success. And, you know, that, that makes it a lot more fun, too. So, um, you know, just a lot of time, a lot of effort. You know, you kind of feel like, you know, I, I think I'm doing a decent job and, and I want to keep doing this. So, you know, like I said, it's kind of a strange story that I had to take the girls basketball. But, uh, you know, 32, 33 years later, I, I'm still at it. And you had to go through another transition. 2010, 2011, you guys combined with Southern Cal to make South Central Calhoun, which the district is still called today. But right. another transition. You had a long time in between transitions. Was this one any different than the other ones? Um, not really. Um, you know, you took two, two schools, uh, two sets of athletes. Uh, the first year was really tough because uh, we shared athletics but not academics. And I, I, though there were some great kids there, I just never felt like I really got to know them because they'd be there warmed up, you'd get there, you'd go right into practice and then maybe even had to drive a bus and haul kids home or you never had that, that downtime where you talk to kids mm -hmm. and, uh, um, you know, again, there's some great athletes there, but it was just hard getting the kids to mix as well because they'd show up, they'd practice together and, and we were limited in time so there, there was really wasn't a whole lot of social interaction and, and so that made that first year tough, but after that, uh, transition's been pretty good. I was going to say, it didn't take you guys long for all of a sudden this program to become one of the better programs in the area, if not in the state, uh, in Class 2A and now in Class 3A. Back-to-back uh, -back state tournaments uh, prior to this season, your daughter's uh, a part of that. Uh, talk about what these last couple of years have been like and the experience of, of finally getting to coach your daughters. Oh, it, it, it's been good, you know. I mean, you got to be good, you got to be lucky. Um, you know, I think Coach Knapp and I took the program over uh, and again, worked hard, a lot of experience there. And then we, we were blessed with some good, good athletes, good kids, um, committed to, to getting better and to be the best you can. So, um, you know, the leadership there, you know, again, they would talk a lot about these same kids, may have just stayed in, in volleyball. Uh, some of the same kids were in state track meet. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that just we were lucky enough to have some some good athletes and uh, um, you know that worked hard and, and were successful. Uh, you know I can't mention enough about having your kids. Uh, you know people say that that uh, you know it's almost more special. You know I was fortunate enough as a as an athlete to 
to play in a state championship game, to be a, a champion as an athlete, uh, been there as a coach, but uh, you know, getting your kids on that, that top stage, you know, playing in the state tournament is, is special and you know, it's a good reward for them because uh, I just, contrary to what I think a lot of people sometimes think coaches kids get all the benefits and, and it's not, you know, I, you watch yours closer. I, I just can't believe anybody else doesn't say that, uh, you know, because you want them to be good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether it be for them, whether it be for you a little bit, that they're your kid, the, the coach's kid should be better. Um, so you challenge them a little more, you expect a little more. And uh, um, so to, you know, both of my two have survived thus far. I've got one more <laughs> year with Allison. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's been a, just a tremendous experience. And Dave, you got number 500 this year, which puts you in pretty rare league. Uh, not many coaches have been able to do that. As you knew going into this year that it was a possibility, but replacing six, your top six players from the year before, did you think going into this year, I, I can get that this year? Or did you just come into this year not really worried about number 500 until you got really close? Well, uh, you know, you thought about the beginning of the year, you know, when you're sending out all your media stuff and you, you sit there and write down 484. Um, you know, realistically, with, with the, the rebuilding that I thought we were going to have to do, you know, I, I really wasn't too worried about it, um, but, you know, we just, we kept getting better and better, and, you know, each win puts you a little closer, and, and then, you know, all of a sudden in the back of your mind going, wow, you know, if we just, we, we could win this one, we could win this one, and, you know, I might have a shot at it. So, um, you know, 500 is, is a tremendous accomplishment, you know, obviously very proud of that. Um, you know, many, many, many people were, were parts of that, and, and I'm thankful for the opportunities I've had. Uh, you know, again, how God directs you in your life, and, you know, taking me from Nesco to here, and, you know, going from Lytton to Rockwell City, Lytton to South Central Calhoun, it, it's just been a constant transformation, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, again, I've had great people to work with, and, and I'm very thankful for that. As that night came, um, pressure, did you think about it? How did you keep the pressure off of your kids? Because you know your players. You were at home, it's a home game, the big crowd. How did you keep the player off, pressure off of the players trying to get you that 500? I never mentioned it. Um, I knew it was there. Um, I just never really mentioned it. Uh, hindsight now, there were a lot of other people mentioning it. <laughs> but um, it, it really I put it on the radio. Yeah, that day. <laughs> it, it really wasn't. Uh, it wasn't discussed. You know, uh, you know, was it nice? Absolutely. Was it our goal? No. You know, we were playing East Sac uh, last regular season game of the year. We wanted to win it. You know, um, tournament time, leading into tournament. It, it was all. You know, it, it was about the team um, for me. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a little pressure there, and, and I think the kids maybe experienced more pressure about it than, than I realized uh, at the time. The ceremony that night catch you off guard a little bit, or did you anticipate some of the things and some of the things that people probably said to you that night? Um, I was not expecting that. Uh, um, I know Brian Knapp was the first one to say, don't go far. Yeah. And I kind of looked at him like, what's going on? And... and uh, you know, it, it would have been one of those really big downers if we hadn't won it <laughs> because a, a lot of people had done a lot of things and, and, and in hopes and anticipation of getting it. But, uh, um, you know, and, and led by Allison, had a phenomenal night, uh, mm -hmm. missed a triple-double by, by one rebound, I believe. So, you know, she worked hard to make it happen, and, uh, um, you know, we got the win, and uh, it was just – it was – it was nice. It was humbling, uh, but but just a, a nice nice honor. Did that make it extra special that your daughter was such a big part of, of that 500th win? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, it you know, again. I, obviously, my wife was involved in some of the planning, and yep. Allison was well aware of some of the planning. And um, you know, I, I think you know wanted to see it happen, and and you know did what she had to do to to make sure that uh, you know the the milestone was achieved. So. You know, obviously thankful to her for, for her effort and, you know, everybody else. I mean, it was just a great win and, uh, um, you know, right, East Sac's kind of been a rival. Mm -hmm. So to get it over over them was, was kind of neat too. Uh, Coach, uh, with all the success you've had, the career winding down, 
you've already announced next year is going to be it, one year left. Uh, have you now? It's the off season. Have you thought about the fact that next year is is your final year? Oh yeah, you know, I, I mean it. Um, you know, there's various reasons where I, I think it's time. Um, you know, one of which is family being. You know, you you just dedicate so many hours to the game. You dedicate so many hours to other people's children. Uh, you know, I made the comment that. Uh, you know, of my three children playing junior high basketball, I count on one hand the number of games that I've seen uh, live. Um, fortunately, my wife videotaped quite a few, but uh, you miss out on things like that. Um, you know, Haley right now playing at Northwestern. You know, you miss a lot of those games because of, of your high school team. And, and, and you know, I, I wouldn't trade that for anything either. But, uh, you know, it's also an opportunity to just say, you know, 30, 33, 34 years, um, you know, maybe it's time to take a step back for a little while and, you know, turn the program over to somebody else that can maybe do it different, maybe do it better. And, uh, you know, and, and then I'll take a step into a different part of my life. Do you think that life will involve basketball in any way, but minus watching your kids as they all probably play in college in one sport or another? Oh, I, I you know, I'm not saying I'm done. Um, you know, when, when my children are done, uh, I've always kind of had a goal of coaching at the, the college level. Um, you know, I hope I'm still young enough that, that somebody would take me. Um, you know, I don't really have a desire to be a head, um, but, but I would really, I, I think, enjoy being an assistant at some level at the college and, uh, um, you know, see what that's like and, and do that as long as I could. And, uh, you know, at any time, feel free, feel like I can step down. What do you think is going to be the toughest part in two years from now when the high school season starts and you're not on the sidelines? Well, I'm finding out as, as a parent, you know, watching in particular, well, watching my son play right now mm -hmm. and then watching Haley at Northwestern, you know, I'd much rather be sitting down there on the bench <laughs> than in the, in the stands. It, it, you know, you, once a coach, always a coach, and, and you, you, you know, you're, there's times I'm yelling at my kids even, you know, play defense or you know, rebound or, or whatever, and, uh, um, you know, you, you sit there and you question, well, what did he go to the zone for? Uh, you know, you just always have that part, but, uh, you know, that'll be hard. You know, you just don't do something for 34 years of your life and just drop it, you know. Probably once a coach, always a coach, and, uh, you know, I'll just have to learn to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Dave, anything we haven't talked about tonight with your, your career, whether it be a coach or in your playing days, that you would want people to know about Dave Burks? Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I guess I, I, you know, my, my legacy, I, I would feel like, would be the fact that, you know, in high school you don't recruit. You, you take the kids that are there. Uh, I guess I've always felt like we, uh, you know, we've got the most out of our kids. And, and uh, you know, when we've had some talented kids, we've won state title, back-to-back uh, -back state tournaments, and, and yet I've had some of my, maybe my best coaching where, you know, we were a little bit over 500, but, you know, great kids, maybe not as talented. So, you know, I guess I feel like that's, that's probably one of the things I feel like I've done the best is just um, utilizing the talent I've had. Well, Dave, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time here. You bet. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Dave Burks, again, the head coach for the South Central Calhoun girls. Again, they picked up career victory number 500 for him earlier this year. Again, I want to thank Western Iowa Networks, our sponsor for tonight's program.